tell you one thing for free shags. I'm fucking starving today. It's one o'clock and two o'clock and I've eaten all these backing, well, most of my calories already. But uh, your two, your one, two action steps, if your weight loss is stalled and you're panicking like fuck, that you're not going to be lean for your holiday or confident with your top off. Now, before I fucking start, wait there. To reiterate my point, I'm going to use kitchen scales because I'm not going to go at me fucking bathroom scales, maybe. If you're scared of the scales, you have bigger fish to fry. You need therapy. Fuck. Oh, the salt weighs 223 grams sound. Thank you. I've got what I wanted out the scales. Granted, salt doesn't have a conscious mate, so the salt's not gonna go go into work. Go, oh my fucking God, I can't believe that, it's not fucking working. Pass me a fucking Krispy Kreme donut, please, because I'm just so shit and I can't handle the fact that, you know, I didn't have a fucking shit this morning, so I'm a kilo heavier. I know the salt can't do that, but you shouldn't do that either. The scales have one job, mate. And that job is to just tell you how much you weigh. That's it. So before you panic about weight loss, and before you bad back, um, your, your weight loss stalling and you're not going to get lean and all that fucking jazz. If you are scared of the scales, you, you literally need to sort yourself out. If, if your goal is to get lean, get confident, you're in the gym and things like that, the scales are just a natural part of the process. It's a bit like if you're trying to get lean, 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 beach holiday lean, fucking boom, yeah? And you're worried that if you get on the scales and not, they're not gonna show you what, what you wanna see, putting all your external fucking self-worth on a, on a number, not a great deal. But it's like a fucking taxi driver in New York, like he wants to take his passengers from fucking Madison Square Garden to the Empire State Building. He knows that he's gotta drive, but he's fucking, he's scared in case he sees traffic. He's got, he's got a job to do, mate. He's gotta drive the taxi, you've gotta diet. He's got to get in his taxi to be able to drive. You've got to get on your scales to be able to see what your weight is doing. The taxi driver can't control New York traffic. You can't control what the fucking number's going to tell you anyway, so you've just got to take what you can. Taxi driver will look, see the road and be like, okay, this is what I'm dealing with, mate. I'm just going to wait here and drive through it when it's clear. That's what you need to do with your weight. Anyway, you need to weigh yourself daily for three weeks to get any sense of accurate data about your weight's doing anyway. Weight loss stalling isn't seeing the same number of scales for three days. It isn't being 81 day and then 80.2 on the Sunday after. It's not in the daily fluctuations. Like you need to see your weight on an average over a week to get any accurate representation anyway. And you need to give yourself long enough to see what the, the trend of that fucking data is. If your weight loss does stall for a week, that doesn't mean you just drop your fucking toast out, out of your tuna butter and just eat fucking tuna. You haven't given yourself enough time. If your weight loss stalls for two weeks, then it's like, right, okay, that, that's a bit more data we've got. It's actually not moving. So we might drop some calories. Three weeks, you know, probably better, but you might be running into territory of like, oh, three weeks is a bit long to wait, depending on your time frame. But you don't be so reactionary that like you say, one day you wake up and Monday you're 80 kilos, the next day you're fucking 79.8, and the day after you're 80.3, oh my God, my weight loss is stalling, I'm gonna drop my calories. Just give yourself some time, mate. And the reason that I do like a two to three week rule with your weigh-ins is because there could be so many reasons why your weight loss is delayed, is stalling that isn't to do with your deficit or your fat loss. If you're not sleeping due to stress, stress from work, mate, stress from training, Fucking bad doms from batting yourself at training. Fucking bad stress from your boss being a knob. Shit sleep because the neighbour isn't fucking shutting up at night. All things that are going to contribute to you being heavier on the scales, but that won't technically mean your fat loss is stalling because your fat loss only is concerned with your number of calories going in. So if you're even if you're in a deficit of calories and you're sticking to your deficit, but your weight isn't moving as quick, you'll still be dropping fat. So that's why we do progress photos. Your scales stalling doesn't necessarily mean fat loss stalling unless, like I said, it's not moving for like three weeks. The amount of times I've checked in with someone and it's like, right, okay, there's not been much movement this week, but you're doing everything right, just hang on. And they hang on and guess what? They drop next week. And it's like, well, if we had dropped your calories when you were panicking, you potentially would have made your diet harder for no reason which if you can do that, you can do that, but you're going to get to a point where your calories will be so low that let's say your weight loss does stall. It's like, fuck, I'm going to have to drop my calories again. I can't drop them again. And then you leave no room to go to. So a really roundabout way in like the one thing you got to do if your weight loss stalls, have you lost between 0.5 to 1% of your total body weight over the last three weeks, on average, over the last three weeks? If yes, you don't change fuck all. You're right where you should be. If no, if you're below that or it's not moving at all, you drop your calories by 10%. So if you're in 2,000 calories, you drop it by 200. You don't not drop weight for three days and drop your calories by fucking 20%. You're just setting yourself up to fail, mate. Hopefully. Hopefully. But it's kind of a, a strange video because like, although I've said, yeah, you shouldn't be scared of the scales, 
and kind of making a video for people who are scared of the scales, aren't I? So it's a bit, it doesn't, doesn't really make sense here, but you get me drift, mate. So if you don't subscribe, I'll come and find you.